Tell me lies, tell me lies. Oh my gosh, we're live. Mm. We are. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't back you up. It's all right. We always gotta we always gotta be real, right? <laughs> yes, always. Oh, we <laughs> are live. I'm so excited <laughs> right now. <laughs> <laughs> it worked it's all good let's cue the music cue it we're live and early this is god is so that's what's up it's yes. a great monday ah i just started it on my phone by accident it's my birthday month that's all so all in november it is your birthday it's gonna be good we're gonna be good we're gonna be hot you gotta have a social distance lunch, Mika. That's what's up. After you come off your, I know, right? Because <laughs> I can't have lunch with just fruit. Like that's not, not, I'm not. You that could. Good. I don't want. You to. Just don't want to. <laughs> Being honest. I like I like good things in November. Yes. We'll take whatever good things in November will come. So we'll celebrate extra hard for you. Here we go. Thank you. I appreciate that. My daughter is going around asking how old I am. Just don't, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. <laughs> her like, grandmother oh, is blind to tell her. Yeah, right? <laughs> Donna's still on, Donna. Yeah. <laughs> you can touch on me anytime. It doesn't matter day or night, but I'm here. Giving you light and love. We're coming on without a doubt. There's nothing you can't talk about. Get ready to start the show. You're always shining and you know we're gonna talk. Ordinary people and that's an ordinary God. Check the reference in Ephesians 5. We're walking in the light and we're living in love. You know we're shining, we gon' keep it intact. Cause every Monday got it coming, yeah, we coming right back. Oh, so act like you know we get it on and pop and that's a shiny show. You can talk to Shawnee anytime. It doesn't matter day and night. Shawnee, give me your light and love. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of the Sharing with Shawnee show. I am your host, Shawnee, and we're live and we're on time and God is good. <laughs> I'm so excited. I am so excited because we were supposed to do this two weeks ago, but... As the old folks will say, a delay is not a denial. Amen. Can I get an amen? Right? Amen. Delay is a, not a denial. And so we have Casey Waite, our special guest tonight, going to talk about some hard conversations. But before we, before I introduce her, your resident or my resident, is it your? Yes, because this show is for the people. Everybody's resident. Everybody's <laughs> resident. Well, this whisper is in the building. We missed you last week. We were texting at the same time. <laughs> yes, ma'am. And I didn't get your text message. And so how are you doing, Mika? How's everything? I'm better. Things are better. Awesome. It's better. <laughs> better is good. Better. Better. I'll take it. Yes. <laughs> Um, the last time we had a wellness whisper, it was, it was a scripture. However, I don't remember it. I'm sorry. Mm, you said it was a scripture. Yes. You gave us. A was it the butt dust? Yes. Butt dust? Yes. That's what it was. Yes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, I'm trying to remember the whole thing. That's all that pops out of my brain right now. <laughs> it's okay, That's what it was. I think I was uh, asking us to extend grace, right? Because yes. we are humans and fallible. And we are but the So like God has grace on us. God forgives and God doesn't put more on us than we could bear because we are but dust. 
something like that it was right. something like that something like that that's the gist of it that's the gist of it so that's what happens when you're creative right you just, right i don't know they come and it comes and it goes <laughs> and I've, I've been trying to do like this running tab this google doc that we started last year but yeah you know, i don't update it as often as i should what i should do is as soon as you say it go to the document but i have realized that over 40 i don't know how to multitask as well as i thought i could well because there's maybe no such thing <laughs> that too the same way you said maybe what say it again casey I said, maybe it just doesn't matter to multitask in the same way over 40. It doesn't. And that's right. the whole thing. I'm glad you said that because <laughs> it doesn't. There's no such thing. It doesn't matter. And I feel like it's really great if we can get into space. You know, this is all about boundaries, right? Learning how to say no, learning how to prioritize, learning how to do what's necessary and absolutely nothing more sometimes. Like, it's okay. We're so driven by the wrong things a lot of the times and we're just busy 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 not as productive as we really could be because we're too busy yes, so busy true. is i don't aspire to be busy and i no longer want to multitask my mom asked me something i was doing something she asked me a question and I was like, nope, can't hear you right now. I'm in the middle of something. <laughs> she was like, you can't multitask? No. <laughs> no. I cannot. I will not. I don't want to. You can't wait. Like, you can't wait. Isn't that important? No, it's not. Finding, creating boundaries with Black mamas is a whole different thing. <laughs> and I'll leave it at that. <laughs> Uh, I did not say that in her face, in case y'all wondering. <laughs> so I was I was safely in my own space, but you, no. you social distance from your. I mouth. was social distancing. <laughs> yes, when I said no, I cannot. <laughs> it's all good though. <laughs> That's what they the t shirts say now. No is a full sentence. That's my tagline on my IG because it is. No is a full sentence. I used to say no is a complete complete I, sentence or, or said, complete thought. Or I don't know. Mm -hmm. I used to say that, but yeah. I used to say that. <laughs> it does not need to come with an explanation. That part. Let's talk about that part. <laughs> We're you trying to, to think that it does. You don't have to explain a no, but everybody always wants to explain a no. No, thank you. I said what I said. <laughs> <laughs> I'm labeled as mean or cold. You didn't explain? Yes. I'm so sick of it. And I didn't say no. I just said no. 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 So, I practice different tones when I say it. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe that matters. <laughs> like, right. Hey, no, sweetie. <laughs> my client and I have this running joke. Her, <laughs> her son's teacher says no thank you but it's like this really high-pitched voice and I was just like I don't even think I can do that it's I don't think I'm physically capable of hitting that no thank you it's like I no my child just gets no <laughs> no no, no. <laughs> there's some people that have an incredible gift of rejecting you while saying it in a very cheery way yeah so understand that you've just been let down yeah, that's not my ministry. I kind of wish it was a lot of times, though. It feels, you know, they're just like, oh, she said no, but, like, I still feel good. You want to know what I hate, though? You want to know the no I hate? Go ahead. Let me pray on it. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> I really, just say no. Just, you know, no, they don't want to just. No, they don't want to just say no. They no. want to let you know they're going to give it some thought. They're going to make sure this is what God said to do. Really? really? <laughs> I don't think they ever pray on it, though. I don't think so. I don't think they do. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Cool. <laughs> and if any of you that are listening, if, you ever, if you've ever done that, please tell us in the comments if you ever actually prayed after you told me. <laughs> I, I have had people say that to me like when I ask them to be on session and stuff and they they do come back and they say yes that's they good do. they say but, yes after they said that let me pray on it yeah I mean I don't know if the the 
the prayer happened. <laughs> right. I think it's probably like different parts of the country answer in that way as well. I've never heard that in New York. <laughs> I don't think I have either, Casey. We're both from New York. Well, I'm from upstate. You're from kind of downstate. You're from the upstate that downstate people call upstate. Oh, that's hilarious. Casey, where are you from? <laughs> <laughs> New Rochelle, New York. New Rochelle. Oh, okay. New York. Okay, yeah, yeah I heard of it. Yeah. She said the upstate, the downstate that the upstate calls the, what? No, Say okay. it again. No, no, okay. City quick, quick 45 second geographical explanation. Mm -hmm. So downstate is the five boroughs, mm -hmm. New York City, right? Yes. And so when you go upstate, it's really like up 45 minutes to an hour outside of the city. Right? Really, it's only like 25 minutes. 25 minutes. But so like from Mount that. Vernon, yeah. New Rochelle. What, what, uh, what, what? what New York is like Hudson, way bigger than that. Hudson, mm -hmm. right. But then I live like way upstate, like three hours from. Like underneath Canada upstate? No, 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 no. no. <laughs> like, th like three hours, like I was an hour and a half from the state capital. Correct me, anybody from my hometown. Is that about right? We were about an hour and a half from Albany, maybe an hour. I don't know. <laughs> it's been so long. What is the wellness whisper for today? Oh, that's so funny. And I was thinking, you know, like, okay, to be perfectly honest, like I've been like nervous about this, 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 this I know, right? interview for various reasons, right? But I was like, and then I was thinking, but I never called you because uh, Mondays get beside me. But I was like, should we do the wellness after? <laughs> just a, well, just let Casey go and get it out. Yeah, like, I have not <laughs> been nervous enough based on everything that you led up to today. Mm -hmm. And I might need to take a break and get more nervous. Because, because <laughs> I don't know, you're I a firecracker. Like you, when you start talking to white people, Casey, you go in. And I I, I wasn't nervous for myself. I was <laughs> nervous. <laughs> oh, I'm definitely the one that should be nervous. <laughs> she gets That's excited right. about these topics. <laughs> all right. I need the one that goes first. first. No, I need oh, you want the Okay, okay, okay. Well, <laughs> it really is simple. You know, a lot of times we are looking for stuff, a certain atmosphere, a resource, a feeling, a thing, and we can't find it. We probably can't find it because we didn't create it. Mm. So you are what you've been looking for. Mika, what's that's up? So profound. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. I try. <laughs> you are what you've been looking for. You are what you've been looking for. It's a real thing. So this stems from a whole lot of reflection this I don't even really know how else to say it I've been in my head a lot um you know just like contemplative thinking about stuff what I want to you know what my goals are things like that why I don't feel certain things why I didn't feel certain things were attainable uh my family and I so I do this thing where I go look at houses um so you know the whole name it and claim it name it and claim it <laughs> <laughs> or or we could call it the law of attraction okay I like that you know <laughs> that's what Jim Rohn calls it the the old mothers of the church say name it and claim it <laughs> and I don't go out claiming nobody else's house so like you know if it don't have a for sale sign and I'm not gonna claim it I'll claim something like it <laughs> but we were having a discussion and uh, I mentor, you know, various young people. It's, it's my jam. I love doing it. I like being in that space with them. And someone asked me, you know, do I actually see myself owning beachfront property? And I was like, yeah, why not? What kind of question is that? <laughs> and they was just like, okay, <laughs> like, why don't, you know, how, 
they didn't say they did it. They asked how, you know, seeing yourself do it is one thing, right? But how are you going to manifest that? And it was a really good question because a lot of times, same thing with, with the whole praying, I'm going to pray on the thing, right? Right. I, like I said, I got really in my head. I started thinking about how easy it is for us to say things without execution. And I think my word for 2021 is going to be execution. Mm. It's, you know, we brainstorm all day long. We outline, we come up with, you know, all sorts of proposals and everything. And very rarely do we execute the idea, um, the, you know, the thought, the feeling, the whatever. It usually is out of fear. Um, but there are other times where it's out of pure laziness, <laughs> right? It's out of uh, distraction, is out of ignorance. You know, it's also out of lack of direction, not knowing where to go, not having the resources and the inability to really see bigger than what's in front of you. Um, I felt like it was on here, but I wasn't on last Monday, so... I must have dropped this gym in session, but <laughs> we, you know, we'd be asking for stuff, but do we ever, do we see it? You know, like when we pray and we ask God for stuff, do we see it? Can we see it? Does it feel possible or is it just one of them things we like to say that sounds good? Right. I've never been one of those people to just say things because it sounds good. You know, like I hate small talk. First of all, people get really irritated with me because I like I, my face needs deliverance. <laughs> they kind of get stink face. You know, I really try my best not to do that, but I'm not interested in small talk. Um, if I don't know you, right, if you're like a complete stranger, I'll probably entertain you for a few moments, and then that's really going to be the end of it. I don't know what else to give you. If you're friends of mine, we definitely don't do small talk. We on a mission. Just, I don't, Shani, don't ever call me with small talk. No, we never have. We've never, we, we've yeah. always gone. We got things to do. Yeah, we have a lot of things. Who cares about the small stuff? Right. I know I don't. Right. I don't give a crap who won anything, what the weather is like, unless that interferes with my mission somehow. You know what I'm saying? So but a lot of times, because I don't like that type of conversation, I think subconsciously my face presents a more serious expression that usually thwarts people away yeah. written all <laughs> they, over your face yeah they think I'm unapproachable <laughs> um but I'm very pensive it's not because I'm mean I'm usually deep in thought um all right so I'm straying away a little bit I'm straying away straying away so all up in my head thinking about stuff and when that young person asked me that question it kind of got me thinking you know, I have a lot of notebooks around. I've counted 20 so far of things that have been written, you know, plans, ideas, things that I thought would have come to fruition by now and they have not. Uh, To-do lists, you know, just all this stuff that looks good on paper, planners and things like that, and they have not been executed. And so we're looking for things, we're desiring things, and we have not because we created not. And that's it. You are what you've been looking for. You want a good friend, be a good friend. You want some love, be some love. You want to create, you know what I'm saying? Like you, it's in you. You got to give it to get it. It's that simple. I think this is so awesome because we're all, you know, we're, we're nearing down to the last couple shows of the year. Mm Mm-hmm. And, you know, we take the little two week break for for um, Christmas. And I was like, wow, I, I, who's going to close? Who's going to close this out for December? OK, so it's going through my list of people came up with this uh, this guy. He was a keynote at this conference I was at a couple years ago and his whole thing. He's got this whole thing. I cannot wait till y'all see him mm-hmm. is I am the solution. Mm-hmm. Right. Yep. So whatever problem that you have, you're the solution to your, like literally to your own problem. Mm-hmm. And so then the fact that you come on today talking about <laughs> you have that because you didn't create it, it's like the same. It is the same. Like we, it's like we have it right in the palm of our hands. 
I think that's why I love being an entrepreneur because I get to create things each and every day right. that turn into something tangible. And it's, it's like, it's, now don't get me wrong, it's hella stressful. It's scary <laughs> too, right? It, yes. Yeah. But when it, when it comes to fruition, it's like, wow, I did that. I created that. Think about Thank it. Thank you, God. We have been conditioned from a very young age. You know, the public school system is not in the business of producing entrepreneurs, right? We are taught, you hear, you can be whatever you want to be. When you get in school and it's like the whole reverse message, where did we go wrong? Our parents a lot of times are not able to see past, you know, their own circumstance. So think about people, you know, in certain socioeconomic statuses that are struggling. They are rarely able to, I'm gonna discard that word. There are a lot of times where they're not able to see past their own condition, their own circumstance to even breathe life, you know, into their child or children. And so children, are sacred they really really are i've always even it's funny even as a child i have passion for children just because there is a certain innocence there is a certain fire and passion that children have and a resilience that they have you know i'm from brick city i'm from north new jersey born and raised there were things that i saw that told me i should not have this much faith whatsoever but i do my mom was pregnant and homeless we were living in a car I don't hate nobody. I don't hate God. I don't question. I don't wonder why that happened to me. Nothing like that. It, to me, it was always just, it happened for a reason. I don't know. When I figure out that reason, I guess I'll be better for it. But in the meantime, life goes on. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Life goes on. I ain't got time to be trying to figure out why we was homeless living in a car, in a two-door car at that. Right. right? Oh, goodness. That's right. Like, <laughs> like, how you, like, because that back seat be messed it up. Listen. Exactly. No, I don't like small talk. <laughs> exactly you don't have time you know um the mission <laughs> one of the things i heard a couple like matter of fact it's so funny that we're talking about this now because i heard it the week that me and casey were together in baltimore doing community organizing training um stop that telling kids fun. stop telling kids what what do they want to be when they grow up and ask them how do they want to change the world mm-hmm. and you will be surprised at the answer that you get. Right. Because it just thing. opens up their creativity. Like they Give how do they voice the world? And if you and at any age, like you know, I probably will you would start at five, but that answer is going to change from five to six yeah. to seven to eight. Amazing. You have some children that that I believe are really touched by God and they are so grounded in what God's will is for them you know, for whatever reason, and you hear, you hear them answer questions like that. But I feel like every child has that seed in them. But we, but we don't nourish it. You know, parents are dream killers. I'm a parent. <laughs> I'm not my, that's my number one mission. I'm not going to be a dream killer. It's yeah. not, I don't think it's ever intentional. Seriously. It's I don't not. think it's ever intentional. No. We have a lot of experience that's behind, you know, killing dreams. It's, it's <laughs> anxiety and fear, right? We have, as a parent, like my child is, well, she'll be seven in January. I only have one. That's all I need. Alpha and Omega. She is good. She is sufficient. <laughs> I don't think I can handle another one. I'm just going to say that honestly, because I'm always in my head, right? Like I worry about her well-being. I worry about things, you know, to where I really do have to pray very hard. Like, okay, God help, help me, like allow me to really enjoy the moment that's in front of me because I don't want to be worried about what she's going to do 15 years from now. She's six, right? Let's get to seven. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? But parents are dream killers. They are. I think you have to fight not to be, you know, when your child says to you, oh, I want to be the first so-and-so, like, don't bombard them with all them questions. Oh, well, how are you going to do that? Did you think about this? Did you do that? You don't have any money. How are you going to pay for college? You're like, oh my gosh, what? Right. You know, there's a time and a place for that. 
when they first recognize, you know, what's fueling them and what they're passionate about, that's not the time. That's not the time to do that. Like you can literally watch the life just leave their little face. They're just like, uh, 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 okay, I didn't. Okay, well, maybe I, maybe I can't be a ballerina, right? Officer. Yeah, you're flat foot. How are you gonna be a ballerina? Did you right. think about that? Well, well, I think that that all comes together with what you were saying, Mika, from the from the beginning, right? Mm-hmm. We do that to ourselves all the time. Yes, we do. I want to do that. Well, how are you going to do that? How are you mm-hmm. going to get from here to there? That's not reason. It's not a reasonable thing. You're an adult now. Yep. Um, you know, slowly we strip away the wonder from the our wonder. lives. So Don't we? Make we? Sure that we we stay in a in in a line, and it's acceptable and low risk. And so yeah. it's very. I think it's scary to open ourselves up like that to our children because we don't do it to ourselves. To ourselves. So again, like how are we treating ourselves affects how how we're going to treat our kids, other people's kids. So true. People that look like us, people that don't look like us. Control is a big thing. As a therapist, is something that I introduce to my clients and they just be like, I'm not controlling. <laughs> we all are. It's okay. It's, it's okay. I promise <laughs> you, you are. Like, <laughs> up the need to control. Like, yeah. Too. It, it, I know I feel it in myself that like, everything feels out of control so mm-hmm. i'm gonna <laughs> i'm gonna tighten the gonna grab on I can. Yeah. and i notice it with other people too it's like all right we just need to it's all about breath right now right can you breathe can you not breathe on mm-hmm. so many different levels um and how do i how do i keep breathing through this you said something you said is it acceptable right and that automatically had me thinking acceptable to whom right a lot of the things that we do is about presentation how we present to people what we want you know a lot of times we can really fool ourselves into thinking we don't care what other people think but we do we really really do especially when you're people of ministry right you really care about how other people think and how you present yourselves to the world but for me one of the one of the things that I thought about and I'll be done with this my daughter my daughter I usually let her pick out her clothes she is very much so unbothered by fashion she's like whatever I have one of those well I had one of those she's gotten better yeah was she a polka dot with stripes type girl yep so nope that ain't even that's that's easy she had on a (laughs) an ox blood color sweater that had pink hearts all right and her leggings were like a mustard cognac brown with with black polka dots. And I was like, is that what you're wearing? She was like, yeah. No, I said, Halo, please go get dressed. She's like, I have dressed, mommy. <laughs> is that what you're wearing? She was like, yes. And I was like, but those socks, the socks was something different. And I was like, oh, Lord, what shoes are you wearing? She picked out her shoes. I was like, can <laughs> Can you compromise with mommy? She was like, well, I said, can you put on black socks, please? She's like, the one with the lace? Sure, the one with the lace. <laughs> we'll go with the ones with the lace. And she walked out the door skipping, all right? She skipped from the door to the driveway, just as happy as she wanted to be. And in that moment, I let it go. So you know what? Acceptable to whom, right? To her. She got dressed. She has to go throughout her day with her clothes on, feeling the way she needs to feel to make her day happen the way she wants it to happen. I ain't there with her. Why I'm worried about what she's wearing. (laughs) Elysia, when she was three, lost her Easter shoes. And I I was freaking out Easter morning. (laughs) And and, and mind you, it was like 5.30 in the morning because we were going to sunrise sunrise service because she wanted to wear them before Easter. Mm-hmm. So now the, the shoes are missing. And she told me, she was three. She says, Jesus doesn't care about my shoes. He don't. Show. She and I'm like, one. you know what? I'm done. She Let's told go. you. She did. That's funny. <laughs> when kingdom children, you know, read you, that is so funny to me. Yeah. Like, well, hey. I was like, you know what? I trained her up. <laughs> Time to go. Because I was like, you know what? Uh, yeah, he don't care. Oh, good. And we never found the shoes, by the way. That's interesting. <laughs> That's interesting. Mika, how can people All find right. you in these social media streets? Yeah, meet Mika Fresh. M E E T M I K A Fresh. No E. M I K A Fresh. One word. Put it in there. I pop up. 
Are you sticking <laughs> around for the conversation? I'm gonna stick around. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So without further ado, um, I don't even know how long I've known you. Two, three years, we knew the same person. Yeah, I we mean, love the same people. <laughs> and um, doing the same stuff. Yeah, went through some of the same things personally at the same time, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and then went to a Lizzo concert with you. Mm -hmm. Got to that really was a year ago. But. Yes, when 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 out when outside was fun, right? But really, um, so um, just to recap the story, so you know, I'm, I'm public on social media because I do this show. I've been doing this show for like five years. Do a lot of speaking engagements, and a woman that I had met one time came in my DM to ask me why was it offensive that the woman in Central Park called the police on the bird watcher? Why was it offensive? And she, she, she caught me on I remember a bad that day. post. Yeah, she that caught post. me on a bad day, right? She caught me on a bad day. And, <laughs> uh, or she uh, caught you on a real day. Yes, uh, I like that, Casey. Thank you very much. And, and you know, the, the, the Shawnee delegation was going in, right? Everybody was coming for her. And the voice of reason says, do you mind if I talk to her? Can I, can I talk to her? Can I educate her? I, because I wasn't going to do it, right? You got to get me on a good day to give you free history lessons. <laughs> and Casey came in and she could tell that story from there. But that's really, um, that's really uh, how this show kind of manifested. I was like, you know, you should come on and talk about white privilege. You could come on and talk about whatever you want to talk about. But I think, you know, we need to center that. It was supposed to be two weeks ago. We couldn't get online. We tried for 42 minutes. It was supposed to happen today, Shawnee. What is today? Today is uh, election day eve. It was supposed election to happen day today. And I got my I voted early sticker on my cheek, you know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? So everything happens according to the time of God. And so Amen. I thank you for coming on Reverend Casey Waite, amazing artist too, mom, all these things, but tell us about yourself in your own words. Uh, I'm, Casey. <laughs> I'm a Presbyterian pastor in my church is in Annandale, Virginia, John Calvin Presbyterian church. Before that, it was in Alexandria for about 11 years. And I have three kids, uh, 12, 10, and four, and I am divorced. And so uh, when you all were talking about church, that's that the like how they look ship sailed like a while mm. ago. Um, <laughs> I mean, a week ago in Outdoor Vespers, my youngest was beating the cross with a stick while I was praying. So we just, I have this amazing congregation that loves me through uh, the chaos and I am grateful for it. Uh, and I, I don't know, I, I grew up in New Rochelle, New York, and I love painting and storytelling, and I'm grateful for conversation, so I'm glad to be here. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, let's just get right into it. What, what made you want to have the conversation with my inbox? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, well, first of all, Shani, you're such a, you're such an open and loving person that I could tell, um, and you, you don't often post stuff where you're really fl flustered or uh, annoyed with folks. Like you, t you tend to, which would be well within reason and understandable. Um, but when I read it, I, I thought this, this, this person has uh, has reached out to you. So there's there's something there. Right. There's something in this person that wants to know. And unfortunately for a lot of us white people, the first response is defensiveness. So it's like, make me understand how I'm right and I don't have to feel bad about myself. And there's not that awareness that like, Shani, it's not your job. And Mika, it's not your, you know, it, it, is, it is not our black and brown siblings job, but we are, I mean, I'm just aware from working congregations and, um, and I guess being white that it, it's like we're all speaking different languages 
and there's, I have a very strong sense that, um, that it is not my black female friend's job to, to do that explaining, but I also have a strong desire to bridge the gap. Uh, so, uh, and, and I always say this to people, I think it's really good practice. So if I got nothing out of the current conversation and if she got nothing out of the conversation or was just shut it down, um, okay. But if, if I was able to articulate myself, it just gives me another chance to do it. I have been immersed in, in trying to understand racism and systemic racism for probably in some sense for my whole life, but really intensely for the last seven or eight years, ever since Trayvon. And, um, but it took so long to be able to speak it aloud. Yeah. And so we, and you can't do that until you practice. So for me, this is a partially selfish. I get a chance to practice. Yeah. Um, but also I think it, because I am a white woman, it's easier for me to diffuse that situation. And I, I thought maybe, maybe I can actually have this conversation. So many people I think want to, they want to understand, but they're so hurt by the idea that they haven't gotten it right. Um, that they instead get uh, offended, defensive, and, um, and then just put the trauma back. <laughs> Um, and I'm not here for that, but I'd like to be here for, you know, in a separate conversation. So when I, when I said to you, would you like me to see if I could message? I then also said, if you're comfortable, I'd like you to extract yourself from the conversation because yeah. <laughs> I don't want you to have to be there. Like, yeah. I don't want you to have to, you know, what, right. what's going to be said. Like, you don't need to live through that. And I think, I, I think over the last couple of years that the real, the real thing that's been driving me from, from my heart is this, um, this, this realization that in order to get through this, uh, this system, to break this system apart, um, to move beyond oppression, it essentially requires people to re-traumatize themselves in order to self-advocate. And I would like to lessen the burden of that at any point that I am able. Awesome. People in pain should not have to explain their pain. It is re-traumatizing. <laughs> yeah. And I think that was, um, you know, that day I was just kind of like relieved. Like I was like, I don't have to do the work because I do this work every day. And I, and it was just a little frustrating because we had not had a conversation for her to feel, but there was a sense of she felt like she knew me. Yeah. Right. And and I get that. Right. I, you know, I'm a whole vibe. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just I'm so kidding. Own it. <laughs> but she did. She felt she had been following me because she said that I've been following you for yeah. years. You know, um, she started I, her, with her love for you. Yes. And, and clearly but, didn't know how how he why you were responding the way you were right and so that's the disconnect where i feel like oh i can talk i can speak to that disconnect because i've been there right like i still you know we can't help how we intuit things or our gut responses to things like that it takes like rewiring and undoing over a long period of time um but i am somewhere in the middle there so i can i can relate to that so I, if i can draw that out from her great so how did the conversation go? Um, I, you know, I, I think it went as well. She was, she was receptive. She said, um, I was looking at it again today. I mean, maybe she will watch this. Mm -hmm. um, I was really grateful for her being willing to have the conversation with me. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I tried to ex explain not from a, starting out from a facts, point of view, but from a, a human point of view, from the exhaustion point of view, let's understand why Shani said, look this up. She <laughs> felt like that was very rude. Yeah. <laughs> um, it could have been, it probably was. You need to set up your own boundaries for yourself and know as a full sentence, like we just said. So, um, but I got the chance, she gave me the chance to explain that to her. Mm -hmm. And 
truthfully, I always start with a, let me listen to how you're feeling. Okay, I've been there too. We were taught to be colorblind because that's what she was saying. Like, I don't understand. Like, we didn't see what happened before that video. And all, all the, the normal things, all the things that I still think that my, are still my gut responses that I have to then undo. In me, I mean, it, it comes quickly now, but immediately I get that. So um, so we talked about that. We, we, we talked a little bit about Emmett Till and I told her that, you know, why you told her to look that, um, that story up that we don't understand as white women in, intrinsically the history uh, of the way that we, the tone that we use and how that can, that, that will trigger that fear, that white woman fear will, will trigger that. But I also just, what, what I really try to talk to people about, and not just this woman, who, who we wound up having a very respectful conversation, um, is when people are in pain, you cannot tell them they are not in pain. Mm -hmm. If I say, um, I am having a problem with a teacher. Let's say I'm a kid and I say, I'm having, I think my teacher is abusing me. Um, you, and somebody says to me, I, you know, all teachers are hard on us sometimes. They haven't heard <laughs> what I have said to them. Right. Um, and I use a different example than that, but it's personal and I won't, uh, <laughs> I'm not going to bring it up here, but, but she just went, she, her response was, oh, I get it. Right. It was an example that had nothing to do with race. And I think the idea of race and racism is so trigger triggering, especially to um, those of us that grew up colorblind and that you just don't talk about race and that makes you a good person, um, that that was an easier angle for her to get it, mm -hmm. to get it in that way. Um, we all have different touch points that we can relate to. I just really, really think it's not your job to do that. But I really wanna live in a world where that conversation can happen. Right. We're talking live with Casey Waite. If you have a question, drop it in the comments. I do wanna to get to some people who had questions. In I have a question. Yes. Casey, when you say colorblind, would you explain for people what that means? Yes. So Please. the idea you, you will hear folks say, and I know that I've said this myself, because really in the eighties, this was like the thing I don't see color. Yeah. Um, and, and basically what I explained to this woman and what I've learned, you know, over the last number of years is when we say that we erase people, we all have different backgrounds and different histories and when we say, I don't see color, it basically means I don't see you. Um, and so it, what we were attempting to do <laughs> previously in American history is to, um, to make everything nice and polite. Mm -hmm. uh, but instead it just was a, another way that we denied the personhood. Mm -hmm of so many, not just, not just black people, but, but all people of color and, um, and their experiences and their unique histories uh, in the United States. So, and, and across, the, across the globe. So that, um, it's very difficult to like, think that you have, you have arrived at understanding and, and it's a loving, you know, you think I'm colorblind, that's a loving stance. And then to be told your efforts to be loving are not actually loving. Um, and so I have, I mean, I have empathy for that, um, but we can know better and do better. Mm -hmm. Does that, is that, I mean, I know, you know, <laughs> what all this is, but for, um, is that a helpful enough explanation? You think? I do. Um, and the reason I asked that, and thank you for clarifying or, or at least giving your perspective on it. It's, um, it's akin to, it's, it's a way to avoid confrontation, right? right. And we do think that we are doing people, you know, really, we're doing people a disservice when we don't teach them how to deal with conflict. 
because we live in a world of differences. And so that means there's going to be conflict. I also think that we have been conditioned to believe conflict is a very negative thing and it is not. It just is how we deal with it is where the negativity can come in. Um, I can't count how many couple sessions we have to talk about conflict is healthy. And even going back to, for me, my premise is, you know, everything is about some early experience, not everything, right? Probably not everything, but most things is about an early experience and, and what we have been trained to believe. So a lot of children that grew up never seeing their parents argue, like, you know, those parents think, it's a great thing. I never argued in front of my child. Well, that probably means they have no clue how to deal with conflict right. from their partner, you know? So the first time something is not peaches and cream, they have no clue what to do. They don't know how to deal with it. They think that they've done something wrong. They internalize it and everything else. And so that was one of the reasons why I asked, you know, what you meant by that. Yeah, I knew what you meant by it. No, I know. Um, <laughs> is because I do feel like the gist of I'm colorblind and I don't see color is coming from the premise of I don't want any conflict I don't want any problem with you and also yeah. believing that if I have a conflict or a problem then I must be racist and these are very concrete you know black or white answers for very gray area there's yeah. no if I if I have a disagreement with you Casey Wade has nothing to do with the color of your skin or my skin it means my brain and your brain were not on the same page <laughs> and I am completely willing to have that conversation with you about race about womanhood about anything well that yeah you uh, know and we, we can do that <laughs> we're just not very good at talking about important things nope, we're not That's, um I mean, to say nothing of sexual orientation, but sex itself, uh, what it means to menstruate, like they're just- <laughs> Oh my gosh, yes. We they're, call it different things, right? The most right? important <laughs> things we are not able to speak about. Mm -hmm. And we are taught that good manners around it is silence. Yeah. And exactly. that is how power keeps itself in power. Yes. Because we are able to talk about it. it I, I know this is a sensitive subject, but you know, the, the prime example is like we have Viagra, um, but, but we don't have, but women's health is not researched. It's not, I, I, I just, mm -hmm. I am tired of not talking about things. Yeah. Right. It and is I tiring. also think that, um, especially in church, right. That colorblind thing, we're all God's people, right. You know, it, <laughs> right we're all God's people and so then now you have this like um oh goodness I just lost my train of thought but that couples you know that that just adds to the whole thing of not trying to talk about it right mm -hmm. and my thing is if you don't see me as a black woman then you can't possibly understand anything that I say like if you if you're just going to be blinded by the fact so what are you looking at when you see me right because i can't i can't. see a human race <laughs> well i mean and what we saw um with uh, in the aftermath of george floyd and churches when you know in this awakening of white eyes um there's a lot of churches that realized that they didn't have relationships Mm. Um, and that they didn't have the language. And so um, I think part of this is those of us that have been attempting at least to do some of the work, like we get to be, we can be the bridge. We can point to the resources. We don't have to be the spokesperson people right. for it, but there's so much good uh, reading, et cetera, to begin, but you can't do that in isolation. Right. So it has to be in conversation. But it also doesn't need to be, uh, you know, it, it's that balance of not not asking too much of our black and brown siblings, um, and doing and doing the work, um, but also making sure we're not doing that in isolation and we're not just relying on our own voices. But there, there's just there's no excuse. There's just so much out there now, um, and also I. I think if we can maintain a posture of, and by, I'm sorry, by we, I, I met white people, um, but uh, if white people can maintain a posture of like, is what can I be learning from this? My goal is if you, 
Shani, if you say, Casey, tomorrow, if you say, Casey, you got this wrong, I, my whole body will seize up with shame. And I know enough now that I will then go, wow, you really honored me by being willing to tell me the truth. Mm. We are being given like an incredible gift as white people to grow. And, and if, you have a, if you have a black person in your life who says, I, you're getting this wrong, please go look, like even that, that takes risk and vulnerability to, to just say, I, I can't answer that. Shani, when you did that, that was enough. That was enough of a gift. So you, I, I hear you say, if it was a good day, like that was a good day. For you to set a boundary, that was a really good day. Um, it doesn't mean that that's what you want for your the wholeness of your experience, but what I want for every person is that we are able to, to see these things as gifts. Like if we're vulnerable enough to say, that's not okay, then I'll be vulnerable enough to say, I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna figure I'm, I'm gonna figure it out and I can guarantee you I'm gonna mess it up again. Um, and I will be so thankful if you stick with me and if you don't, I'm still gonna try to grow. Right. I think humility is a good word there too. Oh, absolutely. You have to be humble in this work. We have a question for you, Casey. Um, it came through my not live. And if you don't wanna drop your question in the comments, that's fine. So I got a question in my inbox. Um, can you explain what whiteness is? <laughs> <laughs> um, whiteness is a construct. Uh, now I feel like I'm being quizzed and I'm <laughs> starting to like, sweat and get nervous. But, um, you know, there's an incredible podcast. Um, uh, it's from On Scene Radio. It's called Seeing Whiteness. Uh, and it's, his, it, it's historical. So I'm, I live in Virginia and so much of this history is taking place in Virginia in terms of laws being created. And essentially whiteness was something that uh, was created to combine, um, to separate the races such that poor whites would align themselves with the power while not actually getting out of poverty, but poor whites would not align themselves with poor people of color because if those two groups aligned themselves and this is you know probably is still the case then they would have the power and that was seen as a threat i am sure i am not getting this entirely entirely correct um, so i really recommend that again like i am <laughs> reading and and trying to do so much now and i'm i have add and a terrible memory um, <laughs> but uh, but whiteness itself is is first and foremost a construct. But we are in this country um, people that have uh, privilege because of the lightness of our skin. Um, and it, you know, a lot of people. I didn't even realize when I start, first started preaching on this that even when I said white privilege, people like did not understand what I meant. So m- my kind of my hope for folks will be if there have been things that we have named today that you haven't understood, Google is your friend. Unpacking the Invisible Knapsack by Peggy McIntosh. What is white privilege? It does not mean that you're wealthy or that you've gotten everything that you want. It means that because of the color of your skin, you're granted certain um, expectations or um, privileges. That's right. When people look at me, they they see different things. The white privilege is a, a, a white swimmer, college student accused of rape, being hailed as a star athlete, and somebody in a similar and a, and a white uh, you know white <clears throat> Hollywood star, I mean B list, uh, you know bribing her children's way into college, and a black woman en- enrolling her her child into the wrong district school and the black woman serving massively larger sentence than the white Hollywood star. It it happens, it just happens everywhere. Another, you know, a really easy, um, difficult for the heart watch, but um, Just Mercy, uh, the book is life-changing. 
much better to read the book, but the movie is incredible. Uh, it's not a threat. I think that's the, the key is we will, as white people, intuit all of this as threat and we, we have to get around it. It's okay. But I think like part of this is it's okay that it feels like a threat at first. Mm -hmm. It's not helpful to feel shame around that. Feels like a threat, move on. And what do you say to the people that say, I feel like with all this talk, like I can't be, it's like not a good thing to be white because we had a, you know, I got a little bit of, um, and it wasn't just from one person. It was from a few people who follow me. I had a friend of ours, Tally, on a couple months ago. I saw that. Ago, and they felt that the conversation was kind of anti-white. And I, 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 I didn't see it. I'm not white, so I couldn't, I, I didn't see it from my perspective, but I keep hearing that, like, you know, it's not a good, it doesn't feel good to be white. I know when I am in these circles <clears throat> I'm teaching about anti-racism and how to be an ally, I'm not telling people to not be, not to be, to be upset that they're white. I'm not, I don't, I don't teach that. Like, why would I, I don't. No, I mean, that's not, that, I mean, that, that's certainly, a, I watched that uh, episode and I, that was not my experience. I realize I'm coming from a different lens these days. So, um, you know, I, I think it's okay to be uncomfortable. What? Say that again, Casey. <laughs> it's okay to be uncomfortable. And, and I think none of us like to feel like we're bad people and that there's nothing we can do about it. And that we've, you know, a lot of what, what we hear folks say is slavery was so long ago. Um, you know, we had a black president. We, we have arrived. I thought we were past all this, you know, or we're even just blaming Donald Trump for what we're seeing now, which I could blame him for a lot of things, but you know, it's really an ap apocalypse moment. It's really an unveiling of what was already underneath the surface. That's just mm -hmm. being, being stirred up. Yeah. Um, and in that sense, you know, Stirred it could be a what God up. is going to use for good. Because if people don't see the pain, if they don't see the overtness, I, I'm not forced to see that as a white person. That's white privilege. Mm. You, I mean, I, I, I assume that both of you have uh, understood about racism and the experience as a, of a Black person since you uh, could hear. Yeah, um, I'm sure you have defining stories. Why are people? Why are white people? Why are we just hearing about this? Because because the the dominant stories were white people stories. Mm -hmm. You know why? You know how can we as white people say uh, that cops that we have a problem with policing? When we've never heard stories about people getting pulled over, we just we just once in a while there's a there's a there's a bad egg. Well, you ask any, especially black man, and he's gonna have a story to tell you about a run in with the police. If we we are not the privilege that we have is that we're not subjected to that. We 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 have to seek it out, and so I think people get. Um, Shame is just not helpful. We feel bad. And I, I'm good at shame. I'm like a pro at shame. Um, but I, at some point have realized that it's just not, it's just not helpful. Maybe it's Brene Brown, um, though the person that I'm obsessed with now is Sonia Renee Taylor. <laughs> um, that, that shame is not gonna move the dial for anyone. And I don't, what I always like to ask people, whether we're reading scripture or, or studying on racism or male, female stuff, gender stuff is like, what's at stake here? Mm. What's, what's at stake looking at one's own whiteness? Where's the threat? It's I talk all self-imposed. 
Yeah, I mean, I talk to my kids about it and, you know, we, I'm raising two white sons and I want to live in a world where they are equal, you know, they have equity, they have equity <coughs> in their friends of color and that may make things look different. I think the other piece of church and just largely has failed on, we, we've talked a lot about the, um, it not being pie, more for you does not mean less for me. But the reality is, you know, when, when God talks about uh, the mountains being made low and the valleys uh, being raised, there is a leveling there. And it necessitates sacrifice and self-sacrifice. And I'm, I'm okay with that. And it's not, it's not how, it's not my gut response. So it is a training that we have to do, an awareness that we have, we have to build as people of, of privilege, who are privileged um, to, to say, this means the, the world is better, period, for everyone. Good news does not always feel good when you're not the one that really needs it. So that's, I don't know. That's good. A lot of my, most of my sermons. That's good stuff. Talking live, let me shout out a few people that are watching. Thanks, Brian, for watching. Terry Bailey, Matthew Thomas, Nicole, Heather. Oh, she said, oh, no, you can't be upset about shoes. I had a story. So she said that because I was in her wedding and I was supposed to wear red shoes. I came to the wedding with black. It's the whole thing. So oh, I, I could not get mad at my own kids for losing her shoes, right? Um, Glenn Bell, thanks for watching. <clears throat> Montana, um, Mary Alster Waits. Oh, that's my mom. And Richard. <laughs> yeah, that's that's why I didn't say anything about my parents. <laughs> Tina Hunter, um, you are what you're. Oh, hashtag you are what you're looking for. That was your wellness whisper. Um, K Marie said that. Ternice, thank you, Kay thank Marie. You for watching Becky Barrett. Oh, thanks, Becky, for watching. Becky. Um, two hours. Oh, what does my shirt say? Oh, thanks for watching, Chris Brown. My shirt says, I can't read the whole thing. It says, Dream, Dream like Martin, lead like Harriet, fight like Malcolm, think like Garvey, write like Maya, build like Madam CJ, speak like Frederick. What we got? Educate like W.E.B. <laughs> Believe like they're good. Challenge like Rosa. No pressure. Yeah, no None pressure. whatsoever. Right. <laughs> All right. Uh, so thank you guys for um for listening and watching tonight. Um time got the best of us. Like I don't even, it's like 8.59. That's what's up. It would no, I, I mean, I think the other, the, the only last thing <coughs> I want to say is um, to some people, we are now hearing and experiencing stories of our longtime uh, friends of color that we haven't heard before. And so good in good, good relationships, the honesty is shifting. Um, mm -hmm. And and that's weird and it's hard sometimes. So this is happening kind of ideologically we're having a shift, but also interpersonally and it's awkward and smelly sometimes and um, painful. And that's probably, the, that pain is a sign of love, I hope. Pain is a you sign know, of love. I was just talking to a client. I said, you know, race, is always going to be a topic you know if you're if you're if you have close relationships my best friend is not the same race as I am we've been friends for more than 20 years and every now and then something somebody somebody will say something and we'll be like hey black person on the phone <laughs> hey <laughs> Latino on the phone, you know, we are all capable of, you know, faux pas and mishaps and things like that. I think 
what is important is what comes after, right? Once you realize you have said something, a lot of times I don't think people are intentionally hurtful. I am always willing, my mom used to say, you're so naive, I'm okay with that. I'm willing to give people the benefit of the doubt. I really do believe in the good of people, but I also understand human condition. You know, we are really conditioned. We don't even understand how much so. We're conditioned. We say a lot of things, you know, they could start off as a joke, you know, as, but, but they, these things carry weight, right? <clears throat> and Black people are not absolved from that, right? We, we say things too that can, you know, be offensive and, and stereotypical and, you know, we group people all together and I'm, not Racism saying that we're brain. above that it's all of our brains right and so what I think is really important is how you resolve that conversation you know so my best friend and I we can have an open conversation first of all my love is not fragile so you say something if um and I'm usually not offended I'm gonna check you on it but I'm not offended I'm be like hey oh whoa what, what was that about where'd that come from what you saying whoa we gotta talk about that pause you know, and we'll have a discussion because I'm willing to understand what part of your experience, you know, push out that statement because that's really what it's about. It's about experience, it's about personal experience. But here is where I think a lot of us, you know, kind of go wrong. We judge our world based on our little small minuscule experience. And that's not all that exists. So if you're willing to hear someone else's experience, right, let's talk about it. And also understand that I don't have to agree with you to love you, to right. like you, to talk to you, right? To be in the same space as you. I can totally disagree with you and still be like, all right, girl, call you tomorrow and we're good. And I think those, the, the, the bottom line is it's teach me how to love you better. Hey, I'm willing to do that. I also think that, you know, one of the, something that you just said, Mika, it's about relationship. Yes. And you have to have these authentic relationships in, in order to have these brave conversations, right? You, you just, have to want to be authentic. You can't you just start there. check off boxes, <laughs> right? Thank you. Just to say, oh, I've had, I've had the training or mm -hmm. I read the book. Like then <clears throat> after you've done that, then seek out real real relationships that you're going to be able to build and grow and I think you know you've done that Casey so you can have these conversations with people because you have real relationships with people that don't look like you I think it would not be that easy for you if you didn't like you like yeah I, I also think those hard things can happen within the context of the same same race conversations too so finding a new black friend not a great idea like not the way forward that's not on your agenda right yeah. um <laughs> but you can still have brave conversations like, like stupid like you know like but you can still have you can still have brave conversations with the relationships that you have right now right right now right now Start with yourself. Oh, this is like a PSA. Like, right you know, now. Right now. Then you look right into the camera now. Right now. <laughs> it's important. It's so good. It's important to start with yourself, for real. It's important to have certain conversations with yourselves. We look in the mirror, you know, we don't look in full length mirrors all the time for a reason. We know. Talk about it. We know. Casey said, listen, Casey dropped the bomb earlier. She said, uncomfortable. It's okay to be uncomfortable. I don't understand. I don't think y'all understand how good that is. Yes. We don't want it. We don't like it. We are dismissed. I don't want to be uncomfortable. Right. No, nobody likes to be uncomfortable. Are you willing to do it regardless? Yeah. Because that's how you, that's how you grow. Nothing about growth is comfortable. Yeah. It ain't. When, you, when your feet start growing, your shoes hurt. That's uncomfortable. When your body start growing, your clothes get too tight. You can't breathe. That's uncomfortable. You know what I'm saying? Like growth is uncomfortable. Right, that's why you just got to do my COVID plan was just get a lot of stretchy onesies. 
that is the wisdom I'd like to leave everyone with this evening. Onesies. Stretchy, stretchy, stretchy onesies. All right, I got you. <laughs> they look the same in the mirror, too. Um, uh, they start to lose their shape after a while, don't they? Onesies do? Mm -hmm. There's no shape to them. You got to get the shapeless ones. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I think I've lost it. Sorry. I appreciate you guys for coming on tonight. I thank you for, like, we literally tried for 45 minutes last time. And I think it was Mika that called it. Like, she's like, fam. He was like, we just uh, have to do this next week. Like, I was still like, Ugh. It was. I was, thank you for, thank you for being my stop person. Because sometimes <laughs> you need somebody to just tell you to stop. <laughs> well, but listen. We had, that, the, we had that conversation before. It's the night before the election, and we didn't even talk about it because this work, re work continues regardless. Listen. Yes, it will. Oh, I, I say. I said, either way, we gonna be all right. Either way, onesies will be super comfortable. Right. Either way, yes. Go, go. I'm not worried. I'm not worried. Don't go be vote. If you haven't voted, I voted. I if voted. You have not voted yet. Please do the needful and the necessary. Vote tomorrow. Put your money where your mouth is. Huh? Put your money where your mouth is. Yes. And Put whatever, your money where your fingers are. Huh? Whatever, right in the ballot. You yeah. Don't have to live. So, you know, mm -hmm. the world is not going to end tomorrow. We're not even going to have a, a result tomorrow. I just want people to be aware of that. I was trying to explain that to my client, too. I don't think we'll, we, we're not going to know. You can stay up all night if you want to, but we're not going <laughs> to. Right? And we, and, and, go really, to bed. you know, the, you know, um, the news outlets, they always do projected. Right? They never call, mm. you know, they never call anything. It's always projected and it's not, ba it's based on exit polls and some other comments. It's anxiety invoking right. for some people regardless, right? I yeah. say, I'm just yeah. not going to watch TV tomorrow, like at all. I think I'm not going to get on Facebook tomorrow either because Facebook, you know, dream killers. <laughs> <laughs> Spoiler alerts. They don't even alert you. I'm it's just going to be it's off. A bunch of doctorates. Do something lovely for yourselves oh, tomorrow. Facebook. Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> Probably gonna take an extra long what hot bath. <laughs> I said, do something lovely for yourselves tomorrow in a, in a world that wants us to be focused on. Right. Amen. Other things. I agree. I agree. Amen. Thank you, Shani. Thank you guys. Casey, how you feeling? Yeah. We got I, through I'm the show. <laughs> I, I'll be here next week. I'll be I'll, I'll, every week. I'm ready to be uh, the the side commentator. <laughs> <laughs> How can um, people get in contact with you if you want them to? I'm on Twitter at Casey Fitzgerald, which is my former last name, uh, and I'm on Facebook. But I get a lot of friend requests, so I don't often look at them so people can message me if they want um and i do look at my kind of random message boxes and and follow her art page on instagram she's a, a pretty amazing artist what is it uh casey waits art i think and i have a website caseypaints.com nice yeah this has been the Sharing with Shawnee show, highlighting ordinary people working for an extraordinary God, sharing love, light, and life. We air every Monday night on Facebook Live. The replay will be on YouTube in about an hour, maybe, maybe tomorrow. Um, I don't have, I don't have a team. Okay. I do have a team. I just have to send it to them. It hasn't. Okay, it just hasn't been created. <laughs> I'm not gonna yet. say it's I don't okay. have a team because I do have a team. And my team is watching, so I don't want to throw them under the bus. Ooh, don't throw them under the bus. No. She ain't mean a team. She I did not mean it. that. It's a miss. Also, speak. <laughs> also, next next week, going outside the box, we're going to talk about gaming. Okay. Right? Game, like you know, like gamers, like professional gamers, we're going to have a whole gaming squad on there and how they are gearing up in 2021 to give back to their community. Wow, 
like gaming is a thing. There's this, there's this pastor out in Richmond that goes on this gaming site called Twitch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like blowing up. Okay. In the world of video games. This is different, Shani. I like it. Huh? I like it. I, yeah. I got an Oculus Quest 2 yesterday, a virtual reality thing. So I think I should come on too. Yes. Come. The more the merrier. So we're going to have the HOD Gaming Squad Saber. Monday night. All right. I'm losing it, clearly. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, guys. This is Bye. the Charlie Show. Peace. Peace. Peace.